have to do with the killing of our child, our child. So let's make that crystal clear. Because the police department has tried to dictate the discussion and put false things out into the media. It's our responsibility as grassroots people, as grassroots leaders, to, to tell the truth, to make it plain. Don't cut around any corners. So like I said, black on black crime, as she, our sister had mentioned, we have to deal with that. But when it comes, when it comes, when, when, it, when, it, when, it, when it comes, when it comes, when it comes to the killing of Ayanna Jones, Black on black crime has nothing. Okay, yes, the the yes the police, the police were looking for a murder suspect. I understand that. They even violated proce police procedure and killed a little girl. The most that would have happened was that they would have lost their jobs. Yeah. But what what makes this sadistic? What makes this sick? Is that they consciously participated in a cover up of a little baby? That's what's the making sense. did that. They consciously participated in the killing of a baby. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they were looking for some. But you know what? The killing of this baby and this cover up makes them just as guilty as the murder suspect they were looking for. Are you with me? Are you with yes, me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm from Gary. I just wanted to say my name is Tiara. I don't want to see any more little children die, so stop the violence. Hi, my name is Natalie. I'm with Gary, Indiana. We're with the Central District Organizing Project. We came down for the social forum. We had a march last week and we requested to have 1,000 men standing. We got 100. So I'm asking that all the men in the community will stand out and step forward and lead your families, get your families back together and get rid of these broken homes. We also lost Vincent Smith as a result of police brutality in our community. And the police won that case. We fought from the day he died and his father passed and then we lost that battle. But in, in the overall scheme of things, we're going to keep on fighting. On September 25th, Every community around this nation needs to be marching on the Justice Department. If we don't unite together and do everything in a rhythmic pattern here, we're just doing things randomly. So let's all get together on September 25th. Let's march on the Justice Department and let's continue to let up. He was black. A black cop from our own community killed one of our own. Yeah, yeah a cop is a cop. It don't make no difference. A cop is a cop. Yeah, and we, we marched against him. We rallied against him. Yeah, so they're taking away our children. They're stealing our children's lives, their future. They're stealing our future. So we can't continue to let this happen. Let's knuckle down today and vow that when we leave here, we're going to take this fight back to our communities and we ain't going to let it go. We will keep the name of Ayanna Jones in our place. I'm bringing blessings from the National Black College Alliance up in Boston, man. And we'll just let Detroit know that we're standing behind you, man. Now, all too often, these murders happen up in Boston. We just lost one of our Cape Verdean brothers to the same type of police brutality. And, man, it really motivates us to see a whole bunch of blacks Whites, people of all different cultures and creeds united to address the issue because in Boston we're often forgetting, man. The black population in Roxbury is often forgotten, but I'm glad you guys are out here repping, man. This is powerful. Bless us. Talk about a couple of things. Yeah, I think that the, that the outrage of uh, the murder of Ayanna is, is an outrage, and this stuff happens all over the country all the time. I'm from Chicago, and in one summer there was 12 killings. You know, I mean, 12 shootings in three weeks. Six of the people were murdered. All right, now you, last summer, right, not last summer, but this, by the police, yes. And the beginning of school this year, there's a young 17-year-old kid named Corey Harris was killed at the school. He was the first kid killed uh, during, during the, the uh, school year. And this, this is also by the police, shot in the back. All right, that was in, in Chicago, in Rockford, Illinois. A young man was killed in the church, in the basement of the church by the police, shot in the back. It was not just he was killed in, a, in, in the basement of a church. He was killed in front of 12 young kids, you know, in the, in, the, in the basement of the church. And right now, they're actually trying to prosecute the pastor, wife and daughter for standing up and saying what happened. One of the things I want to make clear, Carl made the point earlier about we're building a movement for revolution. I think part of this stuff is kind of symbolize what, what actually is going to have to take to stop this. This stuff happens from one end of the country to the next. And the days when this can continue to happen, those days 
pain and must be gone. And this is why it's important for people to actually be part of building a movement to get rid of this. This stuff stems from a system, a system of capitalism and imperialism. You know, and, and it's not something that's that's innate in the you know uh, some bad cop. This that this whole system has to go. And that's China, and I'm here for the justice of. Uh, Ayanna Jones. Jones. Okay. Your dad was going down too. And my dad was going down too in Chicago. Wow. How long ago? Uh, in 08. My name is Jeffrey Carlo. I'm from Gary, Indiana. I go to Roosevelt High School. And it's, I speak this out to everyone. This is not a racist thing. It happens all over the world. We all live under the sun. We all in the, we all hold hands together. I'm here for Ariana. Ariana's Justice. I'm here for Ariana's Justice, and I just want peace. You know, this demonstration and other demonstrations that have happened this week really give political credence to the U.S. social forum. This has just not been a big talk shop. People have been in the streets. They've been networking. They've been talking about solving real problems that we face all over the United States of America. I wanted to mention that uh, the Detroit Coalition Against Police Brutality has been organizing here in this city now for almost 14 years. The Michigan Emergency Committee Against War and Injustice has been organizing in this city for almost eight years. And we're here to stay. We're gonna be fighting on a day-to-day -day basis to end police terrorism, to end injustice throughout the length and breadth of this city and the state of Michigan. We wanna work with other organizations around the country to tackle this problem. The problem of police terrorism is a problem that's manifested by the federal government in this country. Let's make no bones about it. Eric Williams, who's the Attorney General under Barack Obama, has said absolutely nothing about the murder of Imam Lukman Amin Abdullah. The Muslim community in this, in this city has appealed to the Justice Department to do an internal civil rights review to determine what the causes were, the actual causes of the murder and assassination of Imam Lukman. They have said nothing. They have said absolutely nothing about the cold-blooded murder of this innocent Muslim man who was shot 20 times with 21 exit wounds right here in the Detroit metropolitan area. So that tells you something right there, that the federal government, the state here in the United States of America is behind every act of police brutality and police brutality and terrorism that we face. And I'm going to tell you, it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse as the economic crisis intensifies as this capitalist system collapses, there's going to be more police terrorism, more police brutality, and more viciousness by this system. So what does that mean? That means we got to step it up. we got to get more serious. we got to end informality. we got to organize and we got to mobilize and we got to end this system because that's the only solution that we're going to have peace here in this country. So I want to encourage everybody that's here to work together. we got to form a united front all over this country to smash police terrorism, to smash capitalism, to bring about a system that honors and respects the lives of children. And not only do we have police brutality, but we also have police neglect. In my neighborhood, there were 12 bodies found, 12 women found. The, the police never alerted the citizens. We have a very strong community group, and it it makes me sad, and it makes me, in one year, four bodies um, in one month, and no one from the community was alerted. No measures were taken to prepare the community how to stay safe and what really is going on. And so we want to say that not only do we have police brutality, but we have police neglect of taxpayers. In this situation with Ayana, if it had been in another city, and I'm you know, it, you know, they would have blocked the street off, had the a loudspeaker on, calling for this man to come out. Okay, but instead, they bum rushed the house and killed the little girl. Now you want to sit up and do all of that, and then you can't come and speak to a community organization that's trying to do good in the community and alert them and work with them so that we can stop the crime in our neighborhood. They don't want to stop. So I, I, you know, we haven't enjoyed a normal existence in this country in our neighborhoods ever ever had a normal existence where we continue to be bullied, harassed, and neglected by those who are sworn to protect. preserve and protect peace. Thank you.
a civil rights student leader with the Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, Integration, Immigrant Rights, and Fight for Equality by Any Means Necessary, BAM. Uh, I was born in Rwanda in 1991. Um, and I, you know, I'm very happy and glad to be here today. Um, and uh, the, the number one thing I, I want to um, give here is um, that in Oakland, where BAM has been successful in living a movement to get uh, Mesley, the cop that shot Oscar Grant, charged with murder, um, I think that is, that there, you know, there's, um, there's definite lessons that we drew from that. Um, which is best communicated in here and says, you know, way more than I could possibly say and I'm too nervous to say anything else. But, um, you know, just to um, communicate how big that is, you know, 350 people uh, are shot by police every year and in the past 15 years only six have been charged and none have been convicted.